all. This is Mrs. Zappia with Lesson 7, Calculating Probabilities of Compound Events. Student Outcomes for this lesson. Students calculate probabilities of compound events. Pause the video and copy today's essential question. For more complicated experiments, what is a good strategy to organize outcomes and to assign probabilities? A previous lesson introduced tree diagrams as an effective method of displaying the possible outcomes of certain multi-stage experiments. Additionally, in such situations, tree diagrams were shown to be helpful for computing probabilities. In those previous examples, diagrams primarily focused on cases with two stages. However, the basic principles of tree diagrams can apply to situations with more than two stages. For example, three nights of games. Recall a previous example where a family decides to play a game each night and they all agree to use a tetrahedral die, a four-sided die in the shape of a pyramid where each of the four possible outcomes is equally likely. Each night to randomly determine if the game will be a board game or a card game. The, the tree diagram mapping the possible overall outcomes over two consecutive nights was as follows. But how would the diagram change if you were interested in mapping the possible overall outcomes for three consecutive nights? To accommodate this additional third stage, you would need to take steps similar to what you did before. You would attach all possibilities for the third stage, which would be Wednesday, to each branch of the previous stage, which is Tuesday. So then your tree diagram would look like this you would have a first stage of Monday and your outcomes for Monday would be either board game or a card game. Then your outcomes for Tuesday, you would either play a board game or a card game, but you attach it to Monday's outcome as well. So you attach it to a board game for Monday and a card game for Monday. Then when you attach the third stage for Wednesday, you attach the board game and the card game to every previous outcome from the previous stage. So you attach it to these four outcomes. And you do board game and card game from each one. Then your outcomes are BBB, which stands for board game, board game, board game. That would be board game on Monday, board game on Tuesday, and board game on Wednesday. The next one would be a board game on Monday, a board game on Tuesday, and a card game on Wednesday. If BBB represents three straight nights of board games, what does CBB represent? Well, the C represents cards on Monday. The B represents a board game on Tuesday. And the third B represents a board game on Wednesday. List all outcomes where exactly two board games were played over the three days. How many outcomes were there? Okay, so we want exactly two board games. We can look at the chart below. So BBB does not qualify because there are three board games. BBC qualifies. BCB qualifies. BCC does not qualify because there's only one. CBB qualifies. CBC does not qualify and CCB does not qualify. And finally, CCC does not qualify. So exactly two board games would be BBC, BCB, and CBB. BBC, BCB, and CBB. Question three. There are eight possible outcomes representing the three nights. Are the eight outcomes representing the three nights equally likely. Why or why not? 
if you remember from the previous lesson, the probability of cards is not the same as the probability of a board game. Because if you land on a one, you play cards. If you land the dice on a two, a three, or a four, you play a board game. So the probability of landing on a one and playing cards is one fourth. The probability of landing on a two, a three, or a four, each of those is also one fourth. And together, the one fourth plus the one fourth plus the one fourth equaled three fourths, and that equaled 0.75. So the probability of playing cards is 0.25, and the probability for playing a board game is 0.75. So then it says, are the eight outcomes representing the three knights equally likely? Why or why not? We know that the probability of playing a board game is not the same as the probability of playing a card game. As a result, the probability of playing cards three nights in a row would be less than the probability of playing a board game three nights in a row. And so they're not equally likely. So as a result, the probability of C, 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 for example, is less likely than B, B, B. Again, we can see that in the chart below here. The probability for B, B, B is 0.75 times 0.75 times 0.75, and that equals 0.421875. And the probability for all cards is 0.25 times 0.25 times 0.25, which is not the same answer. Example two, three nights of games. In the example above, each night's outcome is the result of a chance experiment, rolling the four-sided die. Thus, there is a probability associated with each night's outcome. By multiplying the probabilities of the outcomes from each stage, you can obtain the probability for each branch of the tree. In this case, you can figure out the probability of each of the four eight outcomes. For this family, a card game will be played if the die lands showing a value of 1, and a board game will be played if the die lands showing a value of 2, 3, or 4. This makes the probability of a board game on a given night 0.75. Let's use the tree diagram to examine the probabilities of the outcomes for the three days. Probabilities for two of the eight outcomes are shown. Calculate the approximate probabilities for the remaining six outcomes. For our next outcome, B, B, C. The probability of B is 0.75, the probability of B is 0.75, and the probability of C is 0.25. So when you multiply those numbers together, that will calculate the probability for this branch. And that gives us 0.140625. We have B, C, B, and that's 0.75 for the board game, 0.25 for the card game, and 0.75 for the board game. And that also gives us a product of 140625. B, C, C, board game, 0.75, card game, 0.25, 0.25. And the product is 0 0.046875. Pause the video and finish finding the probabilities for the remaining three branches. Resume the video when you're ready to check your work. Question 5. What is the probability there will be exactly two nights of board games over the three nights. 
So any combination that has two B's in it. Looking back at our list, I'm going to erase these and then take a look. So we need exactly two B's. So this one will qualify and this one and this one. Okay, so we have three of them. Let's go ahead and write those down. We have B, B, C, B, C, B, or C, B, B. So you're either playing cards on Wednesday or Tuesday or Monday, one of those days. But what is the probability that we'll, there will be exactly two nights? So we can count the first one or the second one or the third one. Do you remember how to find the probability of that? You take the individual probabilities and then you find their sum. So we'll be adding those together. So the probability of the first event was 0 0.140625 and 0 0.140625 and 0 0.140625. And we add those together. And the sum is 0.421875. So the probability is less than half. Question 6. What is the probability that the family will play at least one night of card games? Let's take a look at our tree diagram. And we want any night that has a C in it. So we have this one and 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 this one. So they all have a C in them except this one. So if we count all of these except the first one, that would be similar to something we learned in a previous lesson. An efficient way to find the probability would be to take 1 and subtract the probability of this event. So we have one outcome that doesn't work. When you want the probability of everything but that one, it's 1 minus the one that is not, if you remember that from a previous lesson. So the one that was not counting is the BBB outcome. And the BBB outcome had a probability of 0 0.421875. Right, so this is the probability of playing board games all three nights. And if you're not playing a board game all three nights, you're playing cards at least once. So we subtract that and we get a probability of 0.578125. So the probability that you are playing cards at least one night is a little bit more than half. 0.5 would be half. Exercises 7 through 10. A neighboring family just welcomed their third child. It turns out that all three children in this family are girls and they are not twins or triplets. Suppose that for each birth the probability of a boy birth is 0.5 and the probability of a girl birth is also 0.5. What are the chances of having three girls in a family's first three births? Draw a tree diagram showing eight possible birth outcomes for a family with three children, no twins or triplets. Use the B symbol for boy, G symbol for girl. Consider the first birth to be the first stage. Refer to example one if you need help getting started. Pause the video and create your tree diagram. When you're done, resume the video to check your work. I'm going to walk you through how to make the tree diagram. So we've got our stages at the top, the first birth, the second birth, the third birth, and the outcomes. We, our first birth could be a boy or a girl. You wanna make sure that you spread these out. Then your second stage from the first could either be a boy or a girl. And if your first child was a girl, your second child could be a boy or a girl. 
For the third stage, you go from each outcome in the second stage and do it again, boy and girl. From every outcome, boy and girl, boy and girl, and finally, boy and girl. Then your outcomes, your first outcome would be boy, boy, boy. Your second outcome would be boy, boy, girl. Your third outcome is boy, girl, boy. Your fourth outcome is boy, girl, girl. Some people find it easier to list the outcomes going backwards from the third stage. What I mean by this is the next outcome would be boy, boy, girl. And then the next outcome would be girl, boy, girl. And since I'm going in the reverse order, I'm writing down in the, I'm writing them down in reverse order as well. And then, so you can do it whichever way you want. So we have girl, girl, boy, and girl, girl, girl. And there are our eight possible outcomes. Question eight, write in the probabilities of each stage's outcomes in the tree diagram you developed above and determine the probabilities for each of the possible outcomes for a family with three children, no twins or triplets. So we know that they're 0 0.5 each. So we have 0 0.5, 0 0.5, 0 0.5, 0 0.5, 0 0.5, 0 0.5, 0 0.5. So you're putting 0 0.5 by every single stage every single gender at every single stage. All right, that's writing in the probabilities. Then determine the probabilities for the eight possible outcomes. Okay, do you think that they're gonna be the same or different? Okay, let's check. We have boy, boy, boy. So we're gonna multiply 0 0.5 times 0 0.5 times 0 0.5. If you have not calculated these yet, go ahead and pause the video and calculate your outcomes. So we have 0.125, and then we find the exact same outcome or probability for the next outcome, and that's 0.125. Let's make sure the decimal is in the right spot. 0 0.125, 0 0.125, and you'll notice that they are all 0.125. Alright, so we've written in the probabilities and we've determined all of them, and they are all 0.125. Does that mean that they are equally likely? Question 9. What is the probability of a family having three girls in this situation? So we want the probability of girl, girl, girl. Let's take a look at our tree diagram. The probability of girl, girl, girl is down here at the bottom. And that is 0.5 times 0.5 times 0.5. And we've already calculated that, so we know that that answer is 0.125. Is that greater than or less than the probability of having exactly two girls? So now we want to find out what is the probability of exactly two girls. Let's look at our tree diagram. Exactly two girls. All right, here, two girls, and this one has two girls, and this one has two girls, and the last one does not. So we have boy, girl, 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 boy, girl, or girl, girl, boy. In other words, the boy could be the first child, or it could be the second child, or it could be the third child. Okay, let's go back and write that down. We can have the boy being first and then two girls, or we can have the boy in the middle, or the boy could be the youngest, girl, girl, boy. So we want to know what is the probability of it exactly two girls. We need the probability of each one, and then we add those together. So point, 
0.125 plus 0.125 plus 0.125, and that is equal to 0.375. And that's the probability of having exactly two girls. The question is, is the probability of having three girls more likely or less likely? The probability of having three girls is a smaller number, so it is less likely. You are more likely to have two girls than three girls. Question 10. What is the probability of a family of three children having at least one girl? Having at least one girl means that it is not all boys. So remember we found an efficient way to find, to find that answer. It's one minus the probability of no boys. Taking a look at our tree diagram, the probability of all boys is 0.125. Everything else has a girl in it. So the probability of having at least one girl is 1 minus the probability of no boys. 1 minus 0.125. And when you subtract that number, the answer is 0.875. That's a pretty high probability. In this lesson, you have learned the use of tree diagrams is not limited to cases of just two stages. For more complicated experiments, tree diagrams are used to organize outcomes and to assign probabilities. The tree diagram is a visual representation of outcomes that involve more than one event. Here are a couple of examples that might help you to clarify your knowledge about probability so far. You don't need to copy these into your notes. If you knew that a certain game where there are only outcomes are win or lose, offer a 0.35 probability of winning each time. Can you calculate the probability of losing such a game five consecutive times, given what's been discussed so far? If the chance of winning a game is 0.35, the chance of losing a game is 0.65, and that's 1 minus 0.35. So the chance of losing five times would be the chance of losing 0.65 times the probability of losing 0.65, and you multiply each one of those. And when you multiply that, you get 0.15. 116. So the probability of losing five games or five times is pretty low. Part two. Did you need to draw a tree diagram for that question? Why or why not? No, it is not necessary for this particular outcome. When the outcome represents the same event occurring several times, the probability of that outcome is the probability of the event multiplied by itself for each time the event occurred. In this case, it was 0.65 times itself five times. Do you see the similarity between that problem and the problem with the boys and the girls? The problem with the boys and the girls, they all had the same probability, 0.5 times 0.5 times 0.5. And this is a similar scenario. What are the chances of winning at least once in those five games? If you win at least once, the only outcome you avoided would be losing five times. So all the other outcomes would be valid, and the sum of all of their probabilities would be 1 minus 0.116, which is equal to 0.884. So there's actually a good chance you would win at least once over five games. So you want to keep in mind that strategy of 1 minus the event not happening. It's an efficient strategy to use in certain cases.